But the Future Generations Bill started off as being the Sustainable Development Bill. Uh, it changed its title largely to make it more understandable. It also, in its development, uh, moved responsibility from being the responsibility of the Environment Minister to being the responsibility of the Minister for Communities and Tackling Poverty, uh, and Jeff Cuthbert. Important, that change, because it gave a signal that this bill is important to, as, as the environment critically is. Uh, it is about uh, the economy, it is about the community and tackling poverty, as well as about uh, the environment. So it is about the legacy that we leave for future generations. It's essentially about providing <coughs> better mechanisms to improve our decision making for the long term. You know, democracy is a pretty good system, but it's heavily driven by short term electoral cycles. What we're trying to do in this bill is to introduce some mechanisms that will improve our governance for the long term. Now, it's not going to be a silver bullet, you know, it's not going to change everything overnight. Uh, but it will introduce some mechanisms which will hold people to account and make people consider the long term, the impact of decisions we make today in respect of future generations. Now, why? Well, we know that many of the challenges we face today are intergenerational uh, challenges. Uh, climate change is part of the topic for today, and that's probably the biggest uh, intergenerational challenge uh, that we face. But equally, we know that we have pockets of poverty and deprivation in Wales which have passed on from generation to generation. Uh, so we've got to recognise that some of those challenges are beyond the scope of one term of government. Uh, they're also beyond the scope of government itself. So part of the thinking of the bill is to make sure we establish a long-term uh, uh, strategy, a long-term set of goals <coughs> and measures of progress. And those goals not simply being owned by government, but being owned by all of us, with all of us having a responsibility, a shared contribution in achieving them. So it's a real opportunity to take those challenges, to focus on the long-term goals, and to make sure it's about a shared uh, contribution. Now, the goals Jane has, has mentioned, and um, these are the goals that were uh, initially launched by uh, the Minister, uh, February the 18th, uh, the draft goals, the initial thoughts from Welsh Government, from G Welsh government Ministers about what they think the goals might, might look like. Uh, this conversation is about actually checking that. Are, these, are, are they the right goals uh, for, for, for Wales? What do we think should be the goals uh, for, 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 for Wales? They will appear on the face of the bill. So they will be actually in the legislation on the face of the, of the bill and the act as it will become. Uh, and in that sense, they'll be a bit more difficult to change. They're possible, uh, but they'll be a bit more difficult to change. Uh, so we want them to make sure they're good enough uh, for, for the long term. Uh, and we don't want to be changing them in six months' time. So we want to make sure that these goals are fit for purpose. So that's part of what the conversation uh, is, is about. But the goals only form part of the architecture of the bill. So underneath those goals, and you'll have heard from Jane and you'll have seen from them there, that they're pretty high level. They're pretty aspirational. They're pretty motherhood and apple pie, you might argue. But what is critical is that they will be underpinned by measures of progress. Uh, there will be a duty on a government to set the measures of progress towards achieving those goals. And in many respects, it's the measures of progress that give the goals uh, the real substance. Because a government will have to demonstrate, and indeed a local authority will have to demonstrate, a health board will have to demonstrate, uh, the public service bodies will have to demonstrate how they are contributing towards achieving those goals and specifically contributing towards achieving those measures of progress, uh, which will be set. So it's a really critical part of the structure uh, many of you possibly have been involved in this sort of Williams Commission debate about the future of public service in Wales. And part of the response to that debate is this Future Generations Bill about providing a framework uh, of decision making and focus for all of the public sector in Wales. So it will apply to public service uh, organisations in Wales. And there's uh, a list of the bodies uh, that it will apply, uh, apply to, the, the devolved public service uh, in Wales. Um, it will 
influence and hold them to account for what they do and how they spend their money. The major strategic decisions uh, of those bodies uh, will be held to account and will be framed uh, in the context of the goals and the measures of progress. The current wording, and I should have said right at the beginning, there's a health warning to this presentation because, of course, this bill doesn't yet uh, exist in the sense it hasn't been presented into uh, the National Assemb Assembly. It will be in June, July. Uh, and so you know, there's still development work going on uh, around this bill, and so there's a health warning around you know, things may change, but this is where we are currently. And the current wording is that uh, those bodies will have to demonstrate how they're maximizing their contribution to achieving those goals and contributing to those measures of progress. Important for today uh, is that the local service board structure will be put onto a statutory footing. So the bill will require local service boards uh, to be put on a, to a statutory uh, footing. Uh, and uh, within that, the structures that exist about you know, strategic needs assessment of the local area and a single integrated plan a well-being plan uh, will be part of the requirements set out in the bill. So again, looking at how an area of Wales, local service board area, is contributing towards uh, the approach of achieving those goals. So as well as those long-term goals and measures, uh, the other key bit uh, of, the, of, of the bill is uh, a process of uh, decision-making, a set of principles, Currently six, these may change, but it gives you a flavour of what those sustainable development governance principles are. So in other words, those public bodies will have to demonstrate in their decision making that they have applied those principles in their process of decision making. Uh, so that is you know, collaboration, uh, that is uh, the integration uh, uh, with other bodies and integration of the outcome, social, environmental and economic, a focus on preventative action as opposed to uh, you're dealing with the uh, problems at the end of the pipe, focusing on how we pr prevent problems of the long term, uh, obviously based on evidence and sound science, focus on the long term, and critically citizen-centred. At the heart of this, I think, is the engagement bit uh, about how we work with communities. Uh, there's a lot of uh, chat around the concept of co-production uh, these days. I'm not sure if any of you are in, involved in that uh, particular bit of chat. Uh, <laughs> but uh, in my mind, this is the co-production bill. You know, this is actually setting out requirements about how decisions are made uh, across the public service. Uh, so as well as the long term, there's a set of decision-making principles. As well as those goals, there's a set of decision-making principles. So that's the architecture of the bill. But underpinning it is the requirement of transparency. So public bodies will be, have to be transparent in decision-making and how that decision-making has uh, been compliant to the requirements of the bill. They will have to demonstrate that within their annual reporting process, so requiring public bodies and local service boards to demonstrate in their annual report how they've contributed towards the achievement of those uh, measures and goals and how the decision-making has been applied. It will be a role of Wales Audit Office significant change really to the Wales, role of Wales, Wales Audit Office to ensure that this process is being applied. And Wales Audit Office have currently donated, de 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 devoted resources internally to the change programme they will have to go through in order to fulfil the requirement under this legislation. It will also establish the Commissioner for Future Generations as a legal uh, statutory body. Now, I exist today uh, courtesy of uh, a minister who tomorrow could decide that I don't exist uh, and I could be departing uh, just as a matter uh, of a ministerial decision. Uh, indeed, that's what happened to the UK Sustainable yeah. Development Commission, which I was the member, uh, uh, the Welsh representative on, and the UK coalition decided like that, but that commission was no longer wanted and uh, disappeared. Uh, thanks to uh, ministers in Wales, uh, Wales was the only administration to maintain that independent commissioner role, uh, the role that I now uh, fulfil. Uh, but it, but, it, but it, it was part of a transition process to this point. And this point is where we will now, under this bill, establish a legal statutory ent entity with a set of uh, powers and duties uh, as a commissioner uh, for future generations. Um, 
and that is part of the relationship with Wales Audit Office. It will have an advisory council to back him or her up, just to emphasise the fact it won't be me at this point. Uh, at this point uh, of that appointment, it's likely to be somewhere in 2015, probably towards the end of 2015, uh, that this appointment will be made. My job between now and then is to uh, enable, hopefully, a smooth transition in terms of the <coughs> introduction of the bill and the appointment of this commissioner uh, at that stage. Uh, he or she will have a, a, a reasonably substantive budget. Uh, well, I say reasonably substantive. It will be comparable to the Children's Commissioner and the Older Persons Commissioner. So as well as, you know, we have a well-established systems in Wales. We have an older persons commissioner, a children's commissioner, uh, and we have a uh, watch language commissioner. Uh, this is a commissioner uh, giving voice to uh, the people who are not here yet. Uh, this is a commissioner giving voice to, to future uh, generations. Uh, important to, to say that is um, part of a structure uh, which is about enabling, I'm not sure if I quite like the word enforcement here, uh, but it's making sure that this bill actually does work uh, and that people are held to, uh, held to account in delivering it. So, in summary, a, a clear focus on the what, uh, what's to be achieved, the shared goals, applying principles uh, of max to maximise that contribution, and then to monitor uh, uh, the, and explain uh, the difference that is being made uh, through that approach. Now, I'm going to come on now to this concept of a national conversation, because within the legislation, it sets out, uh, uh, potentially will set out, uh, <laughs> this uh, framework, uh, whereby uh, Welsh Government uh, uh, produce uh, uh, what's called a trends report, in other words, the, the statistics, the data about you know, the things that are impacting upon Wales, that contributes to a national conversation, and that the commissioner is responsible for producing a report on behalf of future generations uh, in year just before the election. <coughs> Quite brave, you may say, of government to say this, uh, because that will be an independent report which will say how we are doing as a nation against those long-term measures of progress. Uh, really quite important uh, that that report because it will say how we're doing and it will make recommendations which an incoming government will have to respond to so it will have to respond to the future generations report in terms of setting its measures of pro set of, in terms of setting the measures of progress and showing how its uh, program of government will contribute towards achieving them now, what the minister has asked uh, me to initiate uh, in this process is a pilot exercise, really, to test this model out. It's a little bit more than a, than a test, because actually the one thing that we will be focused on in the Future Generations report in March is what are the measures that matter to Wales? Well, first of all, can we get the goals right? But then secondly, what are the measures that we really care about, that we should really focus in on? that we should, as a nation, care about, our scorecard. Uh, uh, and that is one of the key outputs of this Future Generations report in, in, in March. Jane has, has mentioned this, this statement, but I'll, I'll just pause a second on it because it's important to recognize the fact that the ministerial statement highlighted the connection. So we're not mad in Wales. We're not making this up as we go along. Uh, this is part of a global process. You, the United Nations are in the process of establishing global sustainable development goals to replace the Millennium Development Goals. So in 2015, there will be global sustainable development goals, which will require the nations of the United Nations to demonstrate how they are going to contribute towards achieving those global goals. Uh, we in Wales will be doing that through this piece of legislation and through a set of goals and a process that I've just explained. So important to say that this is uh, part of a global structure, uh, a global process, and that there are other countries that are following uh, that same journey. So uh, with a bit of glitz and glamour provided by Michael Sheen, uh, we launched uh, the Wales We Want uh, national conversation on February the 18th. There are one or two faces, or certainly one face, uh, you will certainly, or many of you certainly will recognise uh, in that uh, collage of, uh, of, of, of photos. Uh, so what I'll now do, just to end, is just to take you through where we are in the, in the national conversation. Uh, as I've emphasised, uh, it is about focused on future generations uh, reporting. It's about encouraging us to understand what are the long-term trends, 
Alan will be talking a bit about those in a moment in terms of how they impact upon Carmarthenshire. Uh, establishing an ownership of those goals so that it's not just government, but we all have a sense of understanding what we're trying to achieve in Wales, and connecting the policies and programmes of the public sector and government to the achievement of those goals. Again, we are learning from other places. Uh, this is the example of the uh, Future Generations report that was produced uh, in Australia. Uh, uh, so we're learning from a process which uh, they've, uh, they've applied as well. Uh, a set of the data, a set of the trends affecting the future of Australia and future generations and enabling a conversation to take place. Uh, very close links, closer to home uh, with Finland. Uh, and the Finland have just gone through a process of establishing the Finland we want. Uh, and they've set a set of objectives and a set of measures, again similar that not just government but the whole Finnish society can, uh, are about uh, contributing towards achieving agreed goals and objective, mutually agreed goals and objective. So again, we're learning uh, from, uh, from that example as well. And here in Wales, uh, we have, uh, we're, we've, we've set this out. We've now, uh, we've had the logo, we've had the launch, and we've had the lunch uh, that, uh, that was on February the 18th. Uh, we've now uh, begun to carry this conversation uh, forward. We're producing, with the support of uh, colleagues at Colonel Cymru, who are the driving force uh, in terms of, uh, uh, of enabling the conversation to be carried forward, uh, stimulus material uh, that is uh, now uh, available and increasingly available. A new, in fact, the website is there, but it's going to be updated, I think, this week or this week, so the next iteration of the website will be, uh, will be up uh, this week, which will be a bit more all singing uh, and all dancing, uh, leading to the Future Generations uh, report and trying to address some of those questions. So just to emphasize some key points, this is a conversation. It's not a government consultation. That, you know, we really want to make sure this is not done as a government consultation. This is a conversation around the people of Wales about the Wales we want. It is about a learning process to trial what works in that because we can build on it when the bill is in place. It is that opportunity for all of us to inform ourselves about the long-term goals or to inform the long-term goals and to say what we really think should be the measures of progress. Many of you have heard me say this before. We produce every August a little booklet called Sustainable Development Indicators for Wales. A uh, little booklet, 40-odd indicators. That should be so important. Nobody ever takes any notice of it. It doesn't have any impact on policy. Uh, hardly, it's produced in August, and hardly anybody, everybody's on holiday, probably nobody ever reads it or takes any notice of it. They are the key indicators about how we are doing. Now, it's about lifting them up, getting them right, and putting them at the heart of government policy and public service uh, deli delivery. Uh, so, those are the, some of the key messages about the conversation. And we want the conversation to be carried forward through... Uh, through you, uh, through your networks, through your communities, through your workplaces, through your WIs, uh, through your chambers of commerce, through your rotaries, uh, through the networks that you operate within and live within. Um, we will have some set-piece events. Ministers like set-piece events. Um, so we will have some set-piece events. But what we really need to do is to embed this and to carry the conversation forward. One of the things we're going to pilot is this concept of future champions, uh, you know, people who can become advocates for the future. Uh, this commissioner role, all very good, uh, and I've had a bit of experience of this, but as one, uh, as one person, even with a team uh, supporting uh, you, uh, there's great limits to what one person can do in terms of being an advocate for future generations. So we need to try and establish a network of people around Wales who can connect to the commissioner. So as well as having a short-term role, of helping to shape this conversation, we want to try and test out a model whereby there can be a long-term role for people who can connect directly with this new commissioner and provide him or her with the voice and the eyes on the ground in respect of decisions and actions that we're taking and the impacts on future generations. Just to end, um, uh, these are the initial results from the first sort of month of the online survey. I'm not sure if you can see this. One of the questions we asked on the online survey is, okay, out of those goals, uh, which would you say are the, are the most important to you? Now, probably a bad question to ask because all the goals need to be seen as integrated, uh, all, equally, all equally important. But it's quite an interesting insight uh, as to where 
people's thinking is currently. This is about 109 completions, so not that many, but yeah, reasonable, reasonable enough. Uh, and you'll see that uh, a, a, I want to wear Wales where people are more healthy than currently comes out well, well above uh, the, uh, the, 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 the others. And, and interestingly, the bit about participating in shared <coughs> culture and thriving Welsh language uh, it doesn't seem to be as, as important in terms of that initial, uh, initial group of respondees. But this is just the initial group of 100 or so uh, secondi, uh, uh, respondees. We want to build uh, that. And you can see, uh, in terms of their comments uh, on their questionnaires, you can see climate change is there, employment is there as the biggest, natural environment, skills, health, education come out as being the big issues coming through at this stage. Uh, and here are some of the quotes uh, taken from the early responses to that uh, question questionnaire. So, just to finally end, next steps. Well, obviously, we've got the conversation to happen around the tables uh, now, and you're going to have a bit more information to, to work with, provided by colleagues. Um, but from the event, make sure you go to the website. Complete that survey. It, you know, just gives us a set of sense, but complete the survey. Register. Uh, register to be, you know, we're calling it a future champion, it, like, it's, no, it's no big deal, but we're just, it means of keeping in touch with you and, and, and supporting you in having this conversation uh, going forward and in feeding that conversation uh, back uh, to us. Uh, for those of you who tweet, make sure we, t we tweet. Um, I haven't mentioned it, but I chair the reference group for the bill. Um, in other words, there's a group of, uh, of, of people from uh, local authorities, health boards, all of those bodies going to be impacted by the bill, plus some other interest groups uh, uh, who are interested and will have, have be impacted by the bill. Uh, and so that's uh, on the Colonel Cymru website. You, we, you can keep up to date with a bit more of the detail and some of the changing story, uh, as my story might change a little bit, as I said. Uh, you can keep up to date with that changing story via that website. Um, the interim report in June, that will just give an initial sense of what the conversation has come, uh, has, has, has been about. Uh, Bill, in July, uh, full future generations report in March, Bill becomes law, question mark, yeah, long way down the road yet, but Bill becomes law, uh, 2015, April, uh, Commissioner appointed before 2015, duty to be applied in 2016. My email at the bottom, uh, I'm always up for direct contact through that uh, email uh, if you want to contact me directly <coughs> following today. Now, uh, thank you very much, Peter. That was a huge amount for you to take in. Um, um, I'm just going to ask Peter, if you would, yeah, yeah. to go back to, there's two slides I'd like you to use again. The first one was the organisations which at this point in time, the Welsh Government is including uh, in the bill. I think yeah. it's really important that people have a chance to read that list of organisations. Yes. I could see in front of me, for example, um, Clefley Town Council, uh, a few representatives here, community councils are one of those areas. Uh, and can you, can you read them from the back or not? Uh, do, do you want, do you yeah. Mean, uh, yeah, I, I'm more than happy to pick, pick more, up this in a bit more, more detail. There's one missing, uh, National Museums uh, should, should be on there, and it was just missed out by, by mistake. Well, I was going to ask you yeah, about yeah, where yeah, they go. Yeah, yeah, they're just, just one of those uh, slips, of the, uh, uh, slips of, the, of, the, of the pen or the, uh, of the keyboard, uh, so they're not there. Uh, community councils are there. The, the current thinking is that it may well apply to the larger town councils rather than uh, all the 780 uh, community councils initially. Um, uh, so that town, the larger town councils would be in the first sort of tranche and then we'll see how it goes in terms of whether uh, community <coughs> councils uh, would come on board more, uh, more significantly. Um, also important to say on Monday, uh, I am uh, with the Wales Local Government Association because uh, the local authorities uh, are bringing together what they're calling a group of early adopters. Uh, so I think there's about 14 or so local authorities coming together on Monday for the day to look at how they can be uh, uh, supported in becoming early adopters. So in other words, not waiting for the duty to come in, uh, but beginning to apply some of these, uh, this thinking now. Um, it's already been happening, particularly at Swansea, 
Uh, Swansea uh, have been the sort of lead authority for WLGA as a demonstration authority in terms of applying some of this thinking up to now. This session on Monday will extend that across other authorities and I'd be astonished if Carmarthenshire isn't there. I'm sure you are there. I haven't looked at the list, but I'm, I'm sure you are there. Uh, you are. Uh, yeah, you are. There we are. Alan's going to be there. We are. Excellent. There we are. Ex excellent. Excellent. So, yes. Can I, can I just add something from the local authority? From the university, one of the things that we've been doing in the context of the local authorities where the university has a campus, for example, Marvinshire, um, and we also have campuses in Swansea and in Keradigion, uh, is then to work with the local authorities and offer support <coughs> from the university around the sustainable development agenda as the local authorities develop that initiative. So, I, so in terms of uh, what Peter was saying about future champions, you know, organisations that can help each other, uh, particularly in the context of counties such as Carmarthenshire, it'd be really useful to start thinking about whether any of you are an organisation that can help others, or an organisation that explicitly wants kinds of help. But just quickly going through the list, Welsh Government clearly um, uh, is going to be within the ambit of the bill, Sports Wales, National Library of Wales, <coughs> Arts Council, HEFCU, that's the Higher Education Funding Council for Wales, that's all the higher education um, uh, 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 institutions, and under Welsh Government will come the further education uh, institutions. Uh, the NHS Trust, well they're not trusts, they're, uh, they're local health boards um, in the Congress, but all aspects of the NHS are within Welsh Government. National Park Authorities, Natural Resources Wales, and we'll be hearing from QL um, uh, uh, in a contribution later. The Fire and Rescue Authorities, the local authorities we've mentioned, local health boards and community councils. Now the police are not there because the police um, do not have, uh, are not devolved to Wales. But, um, uh, although the Silk Commission has recommended that uh, police should be uh, devolved to Wales for the future. So if police were devolved to Wales, then clearly police and any other service that was devolved to Wales would then join that list. Now the other, um, it, many of you here will be thinking, Still, what does this mean to me? Because you know, does it mean what does it mean in terms of planning? I mean, for many years when I was a minister, we used to have debates about annual budgets when people would say, "Can't we have three-year budgets?" And three-year budgets is quite hard. But we're now we're talking about essentially looking at budgeting for our organisations to 2050. But what that does give you today is permission to dream. You know, what would you like? your organisation to be like in 2050? What are the steps that enable your organisation uh, to get to 2050? So, huge amount of information had in front of you. I think the next slide, Peter, if we could go to, is the kind of questions that you're asking from the national conversation. Okay. So we have that in front of people. But we have, we have um, uh, you know, quite a long time now. We've got about 15, 20 minutes now. Um, uh, if people want to uh, make views, ask Peter any specific yeah. questions yeah. you didn't yeah. understand on the way yeah. uh, of that presentation. But this is your chance. You've got the Sustainable Futures Commissioner in front of you. So, you know, pin in <laughs> to his contribution or ask any questions about the effects on you. Can I kick off? Oh, sorry. On the uh, slide that we looked at yeah. in detail just now, the yeah. way the third sector in that is a huge part of the economy, particularly in yeah. Marlinshire, and it's, it's not it. Yeah, well, of course, uh, as is the private sector, um, because um, the bill will only apply directly uh, to the uh, public service organisations, because that's the that's the uh, way in which Welsh government can can apply its devolved responsibility and duty across the public sector. Public, public sector, so the, the the bill would only be able to apply to the public sector. However, and I should have said this through the presentation, uh, there are going to be real implications for the third uh, and private sectors. For a start, we want to make sure that third and private sectors are engaged in this process and sign up to the goals. There is the voluntary sustainable development charter, 
uh, which uh, I should have mentioned as we went through the bill, but it's a really important, we've got 200 or so signatories at the moment, third sector and private, private sector, which is the voluntary sign-up to the principles and the practice and the goals. So there's the voluntary commitment to the third sector and the uh, private sector there. But the final thing to say, of course, for anybody that does business with the public sector, whether that be a private sector body that's, be, that's looking, to procure, uh, looking to do business uh, with the public sector, or whether it's a third sector body that receives <coughs> grants uh, from the public sector, this bill will have significant implica implications because the public body will need to apply the principles of this bill to their procurement and to their grant making and, and delivery uh, processes. Uh, and as I said in my presentation, you know, one of the big things for me in terms of implications for the third sector is, is the requirement around <coughs> this jargon of co-production, but engagement and citizen-centered uh, dimension of how to demonstrate that as part of the compliance to the bill. So the third sector will not be uh, you know, directly impacted in the sense of uh, being legally complied to, reply, uh, to, to respond to the bill, uh, but they will be through the uh, fact that obviously a lot of funding comes through the public sector for the, for the third sector. Uh, I think, Peter, it's fair to say that the majority, I think it's the, the majority of third sector organisations work in the health and social care fields. And those, in a sense, that because health and social care are devolved, that if government or local government is asking third sector organisations to deliver in those contexts, then they will be able to put requirements on those to that delivery in the context of the legislation as well. Other <coughs> Yeah. Also, well, when you see your list, you're beginning to think where I should be on then. The third sector was. Second on the list, uh, I mentioned to you just now about the Crown Commissioners, for example, and I think the, the control they have on vast tracts of, of land in Wales in terms of commons, in terms of the, uh, the, the uh, shoreline, and the, the implications of that in terms of the marine plans being prepared now. Uh, I think the challenge is, is, you mentioned global goals and the six goals there, is how do you translate that in terms of every decision, the decisions we make on a daily basis. And, and obviously, we, we were at an event, and you were there, uh, when we focused in yeah. the community councils. Yeah. And, uh, and I think their role is certainly going to <coughs> increase in, in terms of day-to-day -day decisions and their direct contact with the community. In the planning bill, for example, there's a proposal that you know, community, community councils have the power to create place planning, yeah. and, uh, which is a concept that uh, one of our ways is promoting. Uh, but it's how you practical examples and how you translate those global goals through six has been identified here on a decision that you make whether as a voluntary organization or a, or, or a internal community council. So I think that is a challenge for me. And uh, um, I, I think, it's all because I have a lot of respect for it. I've got in my mind when, when an audit turns out, it's, it's, one, it's yeah. kind of passion. Yeah. So I, I think that's another challenge as well, how the Wales audit office is going to be able, and, and again, it's going to be quite a challenge really in terms of getting from this kind of monetary kind of concept in terms of balancing the books on actually challenging the decisions that anybody on that list makes in terms of their, their, their interpretation of those decisions to meet those goals. So do you think there's a uh, a role here in terms of the resorted office having kind of a, a, a retraining exercise really and, and how they're being, it, how they can interpret those goals and, and if we can, or in terms of numbers, but measure this quality, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, remember when James Minister shows, we should say, well, we've got this 80% in terms of determining applications. Well, you, you can get that 80% kind of target by refusing an application you meet them, but we always want to add value to that process, and I think that's going to be the challenge, and uh, do, do you think the Royal Army Office is in a position to kind of interpret these goals in a, a subject is probably the wrong word, but kind of yeah, a qualitative way rather than a quantitative way, which is perhaps been there, yeah. maybe in the past. Yeah, no, I, as I said, I think it is a major uh, shift for Wales Audit Office. Um, you know, they have uh, uh, um, now dedicated uh, you know, staff and resource to the change process that they will have to go through in order to fulfil uh, their role under the 
uh, under the bill. Uh, the other element is that there will need to be a sort of an agreement between the new commissioner's function and Wales Audit Office, because there's a relationship there that needs to be clearly identified without uh, there being overlaps uh, ar 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 around them. Uh, and that's something that we're looking at, uh, we're looking at currently. Um, so no, I take your point entirely, and uh, to be straight in your answer at this point, I'd say no, they're not ready uh, for, that, for that role, but we've got a bit of time to prepare. Just one other point against the, one, one of the points you're saying about the role of town and community councils and place plans. Uh, like I know, uh, having had previous discussions with Llanelli, uh town, uh, town councils, you know, I, I think looking at how we work with town and community councils on local place plans that can make this very real uh, in the sense of um, you know, getting that vision and that sense of what are the actions are that we need to have in place for our community at our level that will deliver you know, those goals can easily be translated back to a, a, a local community. Uh, and getting the community actually to look at how you plan and how you develop the community and get a sense of ownership around that. I know we talked about th the Thanetli we want as part of the national conversation. Uh, and I hope we can you know, ground this conversation in that way at communities where you can sense, get a sense of what is it we want for the community, engage people in the community in that, and then look at how we then move forward in achieving that. And I think you know, you've said it, Ivy, and I've been a big supporter of the role of town and community councils, and uh, you know, we've done some work through Colonel Cymru with them in helping to shape that going forward, so critical. Okay, thanks. Right, thanks. Um, First of all, I think it's could, a great could, Sorry, could you say who you are? I sorry, yeah, you. Robert Alexander, CEO of EASIC. Um, ah, right. We're a social enterprise based in Wales, but with a UK-wide unit, and also operate our community trust fund that we're growing. And um, what I would like to ask is, the rest of the UK, you've all governments involved or in any synergy with what you think is it happens here, yeah, but kind of, it's a shame that we're the only ones down here doing it. Is it it's Westminster, it's Scotland, mm -hmm. and it's involved. <laughs> right, good, 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 good question. Um, uh, again, the simple, straight answer is, is, is no, uh, particularly as far as Westminster is, 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 is concerned. Um, you know, I, I, I think uh, uh, the engagement at, uh, at a UK level, despite you know, efforts or the concepts of greenest governments ever and all of, all of that, yeah, no, we're, we're, there, isn't, there isn't the same sort of movement in, in, in Westminster. Scotland? Uh, have got a uh, have got a um, uh, it's a different approach, uh, but 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 it but it has lots of uh, correspondence to it in the sense that they have a very clear structure of of visions, uh, uh, m measures, and, and outcomes, and a framework for they call Scotland performs, uh, which uh, again we're learning from because it is about providing that sort of framework for public sector action. Uh, so Scotland is, uh, is, is interesting in, in this, and similarly there's some work in, in Northern Ireland as well. But as far as the UK government mm -hmm. is concerned, uh, no, they sort of, when they got rid of the Sustainable Development Commission, they lost a lot of capacity to be able to do anything around, around this. Okay, thanks. Um, I'm very pleased, and I think it's great, that we're all having the opportunity to have an input with this. But I'm also very aware that we're mostly of a certain age, and as far as I can see, we're all white. If you want us to take this conversation out into the communities and the organisations we work with, and I'm keen to take it to younger people yeah. and to ethnic minorities, then I suppose my questions are, what support is there for us to do that? Is it possible that we'll be able to organise events to yeah. do that? Yeah. And how do we talk about that? Back? Yeah. No, uh, really, really, really good point because uh, it is about you know that outreach. And uh, the minister J uh, Jeff Cuthbert is particularly concerned about the engagement of young people because they are the best best representatives of future gener generations. Uh, so earlier this week, I did a session with the Eco Schools Conference. Uh, you know, we want to get out into the into the schools and young people di you know, directly, uh, abso absolutely. Uh, and through your networks, as I was saying earlier. Uh, uh, not to have the conversation now, but the Helen and Vicky from Colonel are, are, are with us today, and they're supporting the conversation by producing materials. Uh, I register on that sort of future champions uh, role, because then you can have the conversation about what support you can access, how you can access it. Uh, we had a very good session the other day with the young farmers groups. You know, we want to run a major session with young farmers groups uh, around uh, around Wales, bringing it back to the Royal Welsh Show, then bringing it back again to the Winter Fair. So that's something we'll do through the young farmer. Uh, networks, but uh, you've all got different points of access to different groups, and that's what I'd love you to be able to take away from today, is how you might take some of this conversation back and then register, and we can then can support you in doing doing that. And, and we'll be doing something here um, to coincide with the 
coincide with the publication of the bill as well, for example, very much focused on young people. There was... Okay, there was uh, Neil Evans, uh, corporate energy officer for us, coming across I just want to ask the question, is anybody considering how the future borrowing and the taxation powers for us will hopefully receive, uh, how will that normally mesh with this? I'm particularly keen to know, uh, I'm particularly interested to know how we might enforce the behaviour of the big enterprise. We've done it with past and past, but uh, yeah. the levy we introduced, we can't even, we can't, uh, let's say the Welsh government can't even influence how that is spent. Yeah. Uh, just before I sort of answer the spe specific, I think that one of the things which, um, again, learning from other places, and uh, this was the case in some of the other commissioner roles that I've had con conversations with, the thing that struck me was how the, some of their work is focused on future debt and, and the debt that this generation is leaving for future generations. And that so, you know, as well as obviously environmental uh, le legacies, we might also just need to consider the financial debts uh, that, we're, that we're leaving uh, for future generations. So, so that was quite an interesting part. But I, th I think absolutely, like we, we haven't yet had, I don't think, enough conversation about the impact of the new, new powers, tax uh, powers, for instance, in terms of uh, how you can structure those in respect of the thinking in this, in this, in this bill. Uh, and where the points of influence are. Going back to your point about you know, larger co corporations, you know, the conversation that I have with Edwina Hart on this is you know, how do we make Wales the sort of go-to place for sustainable green investment in terms of companies that value, uh, that have those values? Uh, because you've got large, you know, all the evidence is the growth in the economy is coming from that sort of area. Um, so how do we make sure that this bill is, delivers an economic value to, to us? So we've got a session which Alan uh, Davis, the Minister for Resources and Food, uh, the, the Mansion House, uh, courtesy of NRW, are helping to organise this. Mansion House in London with the Lord Mayor in June, uh, presenting to the City of London, to the big investment community in London, uh, to say, look, this is the sort of Wales, this is the sort of, sort of Wales we're trying to build. These are the sorts of investments we want to come to Wales. This is what we're going to do to support you as investors of that nature to come to Wales, to s try and directly relate this thinking into economic impact and to ensure that our young people are trained with the skills of tomorrow uh, in terms of green skills uh, and, and skills for, you know, for the economy of, 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 to of tomorrow. So, I, I use the uh, Finnish example. Uh, they've got a very clear focus on the Finnish economy they want for the future. And that's one of the things I hope we might get out of this national conversation is what's the sort of economy we want for the future? You'll see that jobs and employment came up as the number one issue for people, understandably, or number two issue for people. Um, well, what sort of jobs, what sort of economy are we looking to build in Wales for the, for the future? And I hope that can be a key part of the impact uh, of, of the conversation. But critical to, and, and I must say that Mrs Hart is very supportive and, in, and, in, and engaged. We've got a conversation coming up with all the anchor companies in Wales, uh, uh, which she's hosting. So all the major companies, 40 odd I think now, anchor companies that anchor the economy, uh, a, a date being planned for, for a conversation with them about the Wales they want for the future. So in that sense, the economy critical and we need to shape it in a way that delivers for the Wales we want. Thanks, Peter. A couple more um, before we finish one, and then two. Yeah. Okay. Just an observation that we've got you to kind of down the Callum, uh, our land and tower, to <coughs> keep it positive so that community councils and town councils, etc., rather than opposing things, look to what what they could do. Um, and so that idea of place, you know, making place plans sound sensible. And because um, there are opportunities, you know, that, um, Ashton Hayes in England have, as, a as a community council have taken forward trying to become a zero carbon village. Um, in Fintry in Scotland they've got a joint, a joint venture wind farm um, with a commercial developer. So rather than just opposing projects we need to try and find either ways of doing it locally or working with commercial developers. And my final sort of point I think actually would be although England and Scotland maybe aren't as far advanced in, in, as, as regards with Wales with this concept they have, they have done more in terms of supporting community energy. Um, the planning policy in relation to community energy in England is, is, str is stronger and clearer than in Wales, which is a bit woolly to be honest in Tanay. 
And in Scotland, they've got a 500 megawatt target for community energy by 2020. Yeah. So there are clear things that policymakers and communities can sort of hang their hats on, and community councils as well. Mm -hmm. And we need to try and strengthen some of that stuff in Wales. Well, when we had the launch, we had a, a conversation immediately after the launch, and, and one of the questions I asked is, okay, you know, this is a lot of rhetoric, rhetoric here, a lot of words here. What's the big gap between these words and the reality on, on the ground? And it was community energy that was highlighted as the, as the big gap that we've got to fill if we're going to really be seen to live the words that you've heard today. Uh, and and I, I need to give you the, the, the prompt or the flag in terms of you know, the work you're doing as well, in terms of the EGNI and the share, local share offers and all of that. Uh, Langatok have got a share offer out. I know you've got a share out, offer out. We've got models of community development in terms of community ownership of energy. We're behind on that compared to Scotland and compared to, uh, compared to England as well, parts of England. As, 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 as well. So that is one area we really have to drive forward if we're going to live this. And it is about devolving energy power, if you like, to the very local local level. Uh, so critical point. Um, I think it's worth just adding, if you look at the second Silk Commission report, um, the Silk Commissioners, um, of which I was one, uh, which was for independence and for representatives nominated by political parties produced a unanimous report that said that energy uh, powers um, uh, up to 350 megawatts should be devolved to Wales because at the moment only 50 megawatts uh, is devolved to Wales in terms of local authority responsibilities on land and only one megawatt at sea. So there are some real difficulties in Wales uh, in terms of taking forward the appropriate approach and actually engaging with communities over what communities might want because the power's going to sit in Wales. So I think that's a, it's just something for, for people to have a look at. Uh, one, other, yeah. one, one example, James, sorry, just of, of a community. Uh, I work with Badalog Community you know, Community Council on a joint venture wind farm, um, which went to planning, and it got turned down despite everybody locally writing letters of support, literally no opposition. But that does not happen very often in Wales. And it's those sorts of decisions that we've got to change because people need to be given hope that if they do campaign locally and, and work together, they've actually got a chance in getting it through at a bureaucratic sort of authority level. Okay. Uh, Gary Jones, ex-department of transport. Uh, was the interesting point earlier about qualitative audit rather than simple number crunching, and it seems to me that under the principles, instead of the narrow focus on prevention, we should be looking at the quality of our systems and processes across the piece, so that uh, we're measuring and looking at that, and we're not sorting out a mess further along the pipeline. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think that's helpful. helpful. I think it's, it's a good question. question. Well, the, the prevention, yeah, um, like, is exactly as you say, as you say, really, in terms of how that principle is developed uh, in, pra in practice, because uh, obviously there'll need to be quite a lot of guidance and support behind this in order to, for it to be. Uh, and, and that's why this early adopting session is of getting people to, you know, to think and, and, and to apply these principles in practice and to get Wales Audit Office engaged in this process should be, you know, a positive uh, step so that when we get to 2016. Uh, and I know you know, having done that day with you on the local service board, um, you know, a lot of the principles that, you, of, that I've talked about are being put in place now. And so in that sense, you know, I think that's what's good about legislation. It, 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 sh it should be building on best practice and establishing best practice consistently rather than I imposing something completely new. Okay. Um, thank, thank you very much indeed. I mean, Peter, Peter mentioned uh, the um, Hungarian uh, Futures Commissioner who came and inspired us all uh, by how he managed to affect government policy in Hungary. But when he came, he'd already been removed <laughs> <laughs> because of his success. But I think it's a very, very important point, which we'd be really grateful if you would like to consider, that if you have a strong, independent <coughs> commissioner who is able to conduct independent investigations, then you do strengthen the people's input to sustainable futures in Wales. So if you have views to that effect, uh, please add them 
uh, to the Mice Park Guild, to the car park over there. Because I think that uh, if people do want to sign up for a strong independent commissioner, the balance between the government input and the people's input uh, will be improved. 